This is Craig McLiaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are 10 important factors to think about before connecting to the system ports to measure pressure and check the refrigerant charge. Tip number one is do not remove the port cap on the vapor line port until you're ready to connect your hose or your, your test probe onto the port because it's going to be low in temperature. So any humidity surrounding the port is going to condense onto the outside of the port and the inside near the valve core. And then you're going to attach your hose or your, your test probe onto that. And now you're going to have water in there mixed with your refrigerant. And so you could accidentally just add water into the system that way. So you don't want to do that. So just make sure you're ready, ready to rock right, right when you take that port cap off. Tip number two is make sure that you are wearing nitrile gloves. You don't want to absorb refrigerant oil with refrigerant into your skin or refrigerant itself into your skin. It just gets readily absorbed. You can wash your hands, but it's a little bit too late. You know, it's already kind of into your into your skin itself. And so you don't want any long lasting health problems or anything like that. So make sure you're wearing your nitrile gloves to protect your skin from any refrigerant oil because it does have refrigerant kind of entrained in the refrigerant oil of an existing system. Tip number three is don't use standard refrigerant hoses that don't have any type of either manual low loss like this or like this. You know, this is an automatic low loss fitting. And so you want to make sure to have some type of low loss fitting on the end of your refrigerant hose. So something something like this right here, this is a ball valve that's actually uh, pre-attached from the manufacturer to the end of the refrigerant hose. So you wanna have some type of a control anytime that you are attaching and detaching from the system ports. Tip number four is using a valve core depressor. Uh, this is gonna be a very uh, nice way to measure the charge. You don't have to rush. And so the whole point of it is you're gonna use this on the high side. And so you can screw this on and you just got to make sure that this is backed out. And so you're not going to be pressing in on the, the valve core. You don't have to rush screwing this in. You can then just turn this in. It'll press the stem of the valve core in enough to read your pressure. And then when you're done, you just back this back out and it actually has a back seat. And so once again, you can take your time just removing this from the port because the Schrader valve or valve core or stem is already back seated again. And so everything is safe. You can do it slow, methodically. And so that's why I like this tool right here. Tip number five is if you are including the manifold gauge set when you are checking the charge or adding refrigerant into the system, you need to remember to, once your hoses are at zero PSI between, say, checking the charge on one system and then traveling to another site to check the charge again of another system, you want to have these hoses uh, with the ends mounted back onto the manifold again. You don't want to have them open to the humid air surrounding the hoses because that humidity is going to allow water vapor to get trapped in the remaining oil that's in the hoses. And then all of a sudden, the next time you connect onto a system, you could be potentially contaminating that system. So you just want to be mindful of that. So, so always have the ends of your hoses connected so you don't have any humid air entering the hoses. Tip number six is the manifold gauge set needs to have its air purged. So if you connect onto the high side and the low side, you're going to have to purge the air out of the hoses before you, say, turn the system on. Or if you're connecting onto a running system, you have to do it with the low side first, then the high side, and you need to get all the air out of say the yellow service hose. And so that's a consideration because you do not want to allow air in mixed with the refrigerant into the system. So that could potentially occur. And that's why a lot of technicians are switching over to using test probes or test gauges anytime they're, they're connecting onto the system's ports. Tip number seven is before you disconnect your manifold gauge set from a running system, you're going to want to do the disconnect procedure so that you are allowing all the liquid that's stuck in this red hose back into the system again. And so all of the air has already been purged. You know, you, you want to do that procedure right when you connect onto the system. But now you need to do the disconnect procedure so you're not stealing all of that liquid refrigerant from a system if you're checking the charge. If you're adding refrigerant into the system, you don't want to then, uh, say, overcharge the system. So you want to maybe... Uh, compensate for that a little bit. So don't charge it up all the way, charge it like a little bit, just a hair low. And then you're going to want to take the liquid refrigerant that's in this red hose and add it to the system if at all possible. Sometimes you can't actually check the sub cooling because you no longer have the high side gauge attached. But if you're doing what's called the total superheat method, you can certainly check the charge 
again after you do that. Tip number eight is to avoid the manifold gauge set and all those hoses completely. We just typically are using either test gauges or test probes, so the wireless probes. And so this way we don't have to worry about contamination of the system. So we're just depressing on the valve core on the system in order to read our pressure and we're really not losing or stealing much refrigerant anytime that we're attaching these on. Tip number nine is to add a T onto the low side, uh, either pressure gauge or a test probe, because what's gonna happen is a lot of us leave this on here. So if we do have to add, you know, a couple ounces of refrigerant or whatever needs to happen, we can add that right here at this T. And it also allows for a little bit of air purging to take place right here. And there's a little valve core in the end. so. We usually use a T with our test gauge or test probe on the low side of the system. Tip number 10 is to use this type of combination for checking the refrigerant charge and for adding refrigerant to a system. So you're gonna have a T on the low side and then you're gonna have a valve core depressor with a backseat on the high side. And so this, this way you can take your time when you are disconnecting from the system or even connecting onto the system. You got to remember that you don't want to have any refrigerant spewing out of the port area. You don't want it on you. You don't want it on your hands. You don't want to deal with it and you don't want to steal any refrigerant from the system accidentally. So we just use our valve core depressor right there. Our T on our low side is there. So in case we need to add refrigerant into the low side, it's not a big deal. And it doesn't take much in order to connect and disconnect off of the vapor line as long as that rubber grommet uh, is at full length and is in good shape. And if you want to learn more about refrigerant charging, make sure to check out our book. This is the Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. And so in this book, we go over all the preparation of a system for refrigerant. We go over checking the charge. We go over troubleshooting scenarios. We go over airflow issues. And we also have made a thousand question workbook to go along with that book. It comes with a self-study answer key. And so we have those available at our website at acservicetech.com. We also have our quick reference cards, which are made out of polystyrene. So they last really well out in the field and in the service bag, in contact with refrigerant oil or in high heat. And so we have all this stuff over at Amazon and our website. We also have our ebook over at Google Play and the Apple Bookstore. So I hope this video helped you. Also make sure to check out all the free resources we have, such as our quizzes, our calculators, our articles, our quick tips, over at our website at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.